Hi, so in this Python quick tip, I want to talk about flattening nested iterables and show you how we can do that. So often we want to flatten nested sequences or iterables in general so that we can iterate over all the individual elements. So here's an example. We may have a list that's got nested lists like this. You can see that 8, 9, 10 is nested inside this other list that contains 5, 6, 7 that's listed inside this other list that's nested inside this top list. And what we want is actually just to get to each of the elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., up to 10. Now, one thing that we want to be a little bit careful with is strings or bytes for, the, you know, for that matter. So for example, suppose I've got these nested strings like this in a list. Now, if we treat the strings as sequences, then our iteration would yield something like this. It's going to take the first, you know, each of the characters. And that's usually not what we want. When we're dealing with strings like this, we probably want to instead actually pull out I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay, right? And not actually pull out the individual characters. So we want our um, nested function, our flattening function, I should say, to act that way. So I don't want to see this kind of output. I want to see this kind of output. So we're going to use recursion for our solution. And we're also going to make use of the iterable abstract class that's in the collections.abc module to determine if an object is iterable or not. That's a nice, simple way of doing it. And in our first approach, we're going to build up a list of all the elements we want returned flattened and then we'll return that list. So we're actually going to build up the entire result set. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing is I'm going to import, so from collections.abc for the abstract base classes, I'm going to import the iterable base class. So let's go ahead and define flatten std. We're going to pass it an iterable of some kind and we're going to build up our results. So we're going to need a list to hold those final results. Then we're going to basically iterate through every element of the iterable. And then we're going to test. If the element in the iterable is not itself an iterable, then we can just take that element and just add it to our result. We don't need to recurse. However, if the element that we find in this iterable, so if we're looking, let's say, at here, this third element, right, in the main list, that is an iterable, we therefore want to, you know, recursively now go through this one and flatten it. So we're going to check to see, is it an instance? So is element an instance of the iterable? But also, I want to make sure that it is not an instance of a string, because of course, a string is iterable. But I do not want to treat a string as an iterable. I want to treat it as just an element. So we'll check to make sure it's not an element, it's not an instance of string or bytes, which is kind of the same, you know, kind of the same deal. We don't want to split up the bytes into individual bytes. We just want to keep them as is. So if that's the case, we're going to do something. And let me skip that, what that something is for right now. And let's look at what we do if it's not. So basically we're iterating through, let's say this list and we come to the first element, I'm. Well, it is an iterable, but it is also a string. So we're not going to be in this uh, statement, in this block, we're gonna be in the else block. Same thing if we look at, let's say this list over here, one, when we look at element number one, that is not an iterable. Therefore, we're going to be in the else clause. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to want to append that particular element to the result, okay? Now, if it is an iterable, what are we going to do? Oh, uh, before I do that, let's just finish what this function does. It's just going to return result. The result is going to be our flattened list. So what do we want to do here? Well, we've just found that the element in the iterable is itself an iterable. So let's say, if we go back to this example here, we are now looking at this element, right? This is now the third element of the top level list. 
and it is itself an iterable. So now we need to recursively call basically our function to flatten out this one over here. So what are we going to get back? Well, we're going to get back a result from that, right? So we're going to call flatten underscore std. We're going to pass it element and we're going to get a list back. So what do we want to do with that list? Well, we want to take every element from that list and append those elements individually to the result. So it's not an append here. We need to do an extend, right? We're going to extend result with whatever that iterable comes back as from here. And that's it. That's the function to do this. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to copy the list from the notebook. So we have that and let's just call flatten std and we're going to pass it L. And as you can see, we get back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it basically flattened our list correctly. Let me grab the second example from the notebook, which is, by the way, in the GitHub repo, which is linked below. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say flatten std. We're going to pass it L. And we get back as we you know, wanted those strings. I'm a lumberjack and I'm OK. It didn't separate all the string characters individually right in the in this flattening. So that's it. That's how we can flatten the list. So this works fine, but we really can simplify this code quite a bit by using a generator. And in particular, we can use the yield to yield a single value and a yield from to yield single values, single elements from another iterator. So we're going to turn our function into a generator function. That way we don't have to build up that result list, right? If you think about this, let's say you pass in an iterable with millions of elements, well, you know, that are nested in some fashion. Well, you're going to build up this result set with 1 million elements. So you're using up a lot of memory for no reason necessarily, right? We don't really, this function shouldn't be using so much memory if we can help it. By creating a generator instead, we can basically yield a single value at a time. And then the caller of our function can decide whether they want to put that into a list or whether they just want to iterate over the elements and save the memory space. So it's more efficient to actually use a generator. But not only is it more efficient, it's actually also far easier to understand the code. So this one I'm just going to call flatten and it's going to be very similar. We're going to pass that. Now we are not going to build up the result, right? We're not building up this array. So instead we're going to iterate through every element in iterable. And again, we're going to use the same if condition. So I'm just going to copy paste that and then we'll have the else as well. Now, what do we want to do if it's an else? Here, we were appending the, res the element to the result. Here, we're just going to yield the element. That's it. We're not going to append it anywhere. Our function isn't going to return anything either. This is a generator. We're going to use yield. So here, we yield the element, which is not itself an iterable. If it is an iterable, what do we need to do? Well, we need to call flatten on the element, just like we did before. What are we going to get back here? We're getting a generator back. We need to iterate over that and yield every element from that generator. Well, we can do that very easily using the yield from. And that's it. That's our function. You can see that the code has been simplified quite a bit and we're not building up this result list right before returning it. We just basically calculate the next element return, you know, and yield it. Calculate the next element, yield it and so on. So let's make sure that it works. I'm going to grab this over here. Now we're going to call flatten. Now, obviously, if I just print out what flatten is, we don't actually see anything because it's a generator object. I need to actually iterate through it. So I could write a for loop or more simply, I could just basically build up a list out of it so that I can see the elements in there. And you can see it's the same as before. And if we do this with the ones with the strings, we should really get the same thing. And of course, we have to do list as well. And then you can see I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. 
So the way we've coded our function, it will work with nested gen, you know, iterables in general, not, not just sequence types. For example, let's say we say x equals zip. So as we know, zip is a generator function. So it's not going to return a list or a sequence. It's going to be a generator. Range is the same thing. It's also more of a generator function. So let's go ahead and zip, let's say 100 uh, up to and including 105, uh, up to but not including 105 and then with uh, one up to but not including five. So if we look at x, well, that's this zip. Now we can actually list, create a list out of that. We can actually iterate through the list to see what it is. And you can see we have nested, right? We've got a list that contains a tuple here. Now, obviously this is, a, you know, this here is an iterator, you know, it is not actually a list. I made it into a list here. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that flatten works with that as well. And so we're going to call flatten on X and I'm going to now iterate through the result of the flatten generator, right? Iterate through all the results and see what we get. And indeed that worked correctly. One, 100, two, 101, et cetera. Okay, so let's uh, switch and actually do some timings and let's see how it performs. So from time it, import time it. And we're going to use this example here. Let me grab this one over here. Doesn't matter which one we use. Um, I'll just use the one with the integers. So time it. And we're going to call flatten STD with L. Now, what is, where is it going to get L and flatten? From the globals. So globals equals globals. And then we're going to repeat this iteration, let's say a million times, which I think is the default for time it, but I'll specify it specifically. So let's go ahead and run that. And took about 2.19 seconds. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm not going to use flatten STD. I'm going to use the generator version of it. Let's run this 0.11 seconds. So that looks way faster. But of course I cheated. Can you spot the what I did and why this time it isn't really comparing apples to apples? Pause the video and think about it a little bit. So the reason it looks faster is because remember, flatten is a generator. We have not iterated through the elements of flatten. We basically just created the generator but we never iterated through the elements. It never had to do the work of actually unnesting all the elements. So we need to fix that. And all we need to do is iterate through it. And I'm gonna do it by creating a list. So this basically the result of flatten STDL and list flatten L should be identical lists. So let's go ahead and run that now. And as you can see, 2.3 seconds. So it's very close, it's a little slower than using flatten STD, but really, you know, over a million iterations, you can see it's like 0.1 second difference, something like that. So yes, it's maybe a tiny bit slower, but the generator approach has the advantage that it will be more memory efficient in general, as well really as more computationally efficient if you don't actually iterate over the entire result set of flatten. Right? If you only need to grab the first two or three elements, you saved a ton of work by not actually creating all the elements of the flattening, right? as well, of course, as saving the memory. And that's it. A nice, easy way to flatten nested iterables using recursion and generators. Thanks for watching.